Now we can do a quantitative comparison question that almost 60% of the people who took an official GRE got wrong. We're told at the top that D times S does not equal zero, so neither D nor S can equal zero. And then we're asked to compare two columns. Column A, the time required to travel D miles at S miles per hour, and column B, the time required to travel D over two miles at 2s miles per hour. Now you're asked to pick A if the quantity in column A is greater, B if the quantity in column B is greater, C if the two quantities are equal, and D if the relationship cannot be determined from the information given. The first thing we can do is break down the elements in each column. We have similar elements. They both want to know the time, Column A talks about D miles at S miles per hour, and column B talks about D over 2 miles at 2S miles per hour. Since only 42% of the people who took the GRE got this question right, it might be worth trying to figure out what the other 58% did. It's possible that they fell asleep in algebra class and they just put together a little equation that says T equals D times S, and that means that T equals d over 2 times 2s for column B. Then they simplify the equation in column B to equal t equals d times s. Can you see what answer all of these confused algebra students pick? Of course all of these students think that they've shown how good their algebra is and they try to prove it by picking c that the two quantities are equal. We can see the source of their confusion if we look at the two columns more carefully. They're looking for time and miles and then miles per hour. So S includes both the time and the distance. This means that the correct formula is that rate equals distance over time because rate equals distance over time. Now we can use this formula to solve a problem that we already know the answer to. What do you think the time is that it will take to travel 10 miles at 10 miles per hour? Now we plug in 10 miles for the distance and 10 miles per hour for the rate. Can you figure out the time? It takes one hour to travel 10 miles at 10 miles per hour. Now let's compare this with column B by plugging in 10 for D at miles and 10 for S for rate. Now column B is asking us the time required to travel 5 miles at 20 miles per hour and we can plug this into our formula. This means at 20 miles per hour we can go 5 miles in T time. Since the two columns want us to compare the time, we can use a little algebra trick to make everything in terms of time. That means column A tells us it takes one hour to go 10 miles at 10 miles per hour, and column B tells us it takes T time to go 5 miles at 20 miles an hour. We can reduce the fraction in column B to T equals 1 over 4. So which answer would you pick? A, B, C, or D? Since the time required in column A is one hour and the time required in column B is a quarter hour, you should pick answer A. Now we can generalize from this specific example that we already understand to the more general information that our correct formula of R equals D over T gives us by doubling the rate and cutting the distance in half in column B. Since the two columns ask us about time, we can put our formulas in terms of time so that column A says T equals D over R and column B tells us T equals D divided by 2 over 2R. This means column A gives us T equals D over R and column B gives us T equals D over 4R. 
Can you see which is larger now? Since column B tells us we're going to be able to travel the same distance as column A, but doing it four times the rate, it means it's going to take a lot more time to get there on column A, so the quantity in column A is greater. Testing for the public. Nonprofit since 1985. No one makes things easier. 